everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be all about some products that I regret buying. Ah, uh, yeah, it is that time to go through some products that I'm like, ah, boo. Wish I hadn't have bought that. So if you wanna see some products I regret buying, why don't we go ahead and get started. Okay, before we jump into it, I do have a regret series playlist. I have a series of products I regret buying, don't regret buying, regret not buying, all kinds of fun stuff. So I will have that playlist listed down below. But the first products that I wanna talk about here are these Anastasia Beverly Hills lipsticks. I was gonna say liquid lipsticks. These are not liquid lipsticks, her regular matte lipsticks. All right, so the first shade I bought, I believe it was from Sephora, and it was called Dead Roses. When it first came out, I was intrigued by them. I have tried her liquid lipsticks, and I don't love them, and I was like, well, maybe more of her regular formula I would enjoy, and it's supposed to be more of a matte finish. I like matte lipsticks, so I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I bought Dead Roses, and I was like, oh no. Like, the first time I was putting it on, I was like, why will it not apply easily to my lips? It's because it's a matte formula, but a regular lipstick, I, I find this not a whole lot, but I have seen this with other lipsticks like this. It just is hard to apply because it doesn't apply creamy. It doesn't apply smooth. This lipstick kind of like skips, 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 skips across my lips and just looks kind of crazy. And it's really hard to get like an even application and just to make my lips look nice with this lipstick. And I was like, ah, shoot. Like I really wanted to like this lipstick. And then because I'm a genius, I was like, I'll just buy another one. I'll just buy another one and give it a shot. Like this is probably the, what I really regret buying. Why would I buy another one? I don't know, but in my mind I was like, well, this shade is more of like a, I mean, it's called Dead Roses. It's like a deep rosy color, but like a little bit of like on the grayish side almost. And I was like, maybe it was just too different of a color. Maybe I need more of a nude color and then I'll enjoy it more. Why I think this? I don't know, but I did. So I bought another one. Same thing. <laughs> same thing, same problems. Doesn't apply easily to the lips. The application is just kind of a mess on me. And overall, I just don't love this lipstick. Why I bought two, I don't know. I'm disappointed with myself. Um, the second shade I bought was in Buff, but these are lipsticks that I definitely do regret buying. I regret that I bought another one, even though I didn't love the first one. But I felt like I was hearing people say really good things about these when they first came out, and I was kind of having that moment of like, why don't I love it too? Surely if I just buy another one, I'm going to love it then. And that didn't really work out for me. So I feel kind of silly, but I'm here to admit my makeup mistakes. But yeah, the Anastasia Matte Lipsticks just are not for me. So next up, I have a product here from Dose of Colors, and I love Dose of Colors. I love their lipsticks, I love their eyeshadow palettes, so this one kinda hurts, but I really, honestly regret buying this. This is one of their ideal duos. Now, I will say, I think that this is really pretty, and I've created some pretty fun eye looks with it. I enjoy that. What it is, is a duo for your eyes, like the name might suggest. So the top here, you pop it off, it has this little tiny mirror, which I know that other beauty bloggers can do their makeup like this, I can't, but for them, that would probably work out really well. And then you have this kind of like, like a base shade. And I got mine in the shade Mint To Be. This was part of their mint collection, so the they are like the minty green shades. So this is kind of like a base and it's kind of sticky. So you apply it to your eye all over and then you twist it off here and then you have loose pigment. I kind of want to be careful because I don't want to spill it everywhere, but you have a loose pigment and it's really beautiful. It's I've done like mermaid eyes with this. When I want that mermaid eye look, I can reach into this and create a really pretty look. But my problem is, is that I really don't feel like this is all that different from just a regular eyeshadow, especially in like the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I can get a very similar look with the eyeshadows in there and even just other eyeshadow palettes that have kind of like that mint green shimmer to it. I can get that in there and I typically reach for them versus going in a drawer and grabbing this out and laying the base and then coming in with the pigment. It just is like too time consuming and it's not me. I know that I'm more of a palette girl. I like reaching into a palette and creating a full eye look. Sure, sometimes I come in and like top it off with glitter or something, but most of the times I'm going into one palette and that's just my personal makeup preference. So I should have known that. I should have known that going into it that simply because of how my makeup style is and my makeup preferences that we wouldn't have gotten along. Do I still think it's pretty? Yes, and I get the concept behind it, but like one of my biggest regrets with this is that it was $25. It was $25 
for one, oh my gosh, it's like sometimes I stop and think about it. I'm like, Samantha, get it together, girlfriend. So I definitely do regret it for that because $25 just continually sits on my desk and I don't reach for it and I get so disappointed with myself when I look at it because I'm like, you knew yourself better. I think it was just because I was so hyped on Dose of Colors and I wanted to try so many different things that I just decided to try this and... I get it and, I, and it's a nice product and I'm sure it will work for people if that is more of your makeup preference, but for me it's not and that was $25. Ugh. So next up, I don't have this product any longer, but I bought some lashes from Tarte Cosmetics and unfortunately I really did not enjoy them. I think maybe I put this in a makeup monthly and I mentioned the lashes that I just did not love and I actually got rid of the lashes. I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to keep them around my collection. I tried them I think three different times and each time I was like, these are just not for me. I could immediately tell the first time I went to apply them. I didn't even like the feel of them, like the feel, like something was off for me. Um, I just did not love them and I had a lot of troubles getting them on my eyes especially the inner corner just the way the band was they just did not work well for me I did get it in a set and it had like their lash adhesive and I think maybe like a mascara or something like that and everything else was fine for me but those lashes like that was kind of the main reason why I was purchasing the set was because I really wanted to try out Tarte lashes and they were just a no-go for me I did, didn't even want to keep them around in my collection I was like nope I have too many other lashes that I love so much I'm kicking them out of my lash drawer so unfortunately the Tarte lashes ugh. and it just sucks because I bought a set for it so I don't know like I could have bought I could have just purchased one pair of lashes and tried, but instead I got a set and probably spent more money. So it's like, ah, Samantha, not cool girlfriend. Uh, but next up, I have a dry shampoo foam here. This is from the brand Way. Okay, so Way is a bit of a newer brand, and I know there's a lot of hype around the brand, and I think because Jen Atkin, who's the owner, like, she's, like, friends with a bunch of celebrities, including, like, Kardashians, so you constantly, and also big beauty influencers, so, like, you constantly see Way being recommended and put out there, and people started talking a lot about this dry shampoo foam. And I'm someone, I have dry shampoo in my hair today. I think I'm on day four hair. I only wash my hair about twice a week. Um, so a lot of times I rely on dry shampoo for like days three and four. And I feel like I've just been on the hunt for the best of dry shampoo and I still have not been able to find it. I purchased this one because a lot of people were talking about it. And it's really interesting because when you squeeze it out, it's foam, it looks like a mousse. And then when you put it in your hair, it's kind of crazy because it does make your hair wet, but then it's like your hair's dry. It's I don't know, it's really bizarre, but to me, it didn't actually do anything besides, like, maybe give my hair a little bit of volume, which is nice. I do have extensions in today, but it, like, maybe gave it a little bit of volume, and I have really thin hair normally, and so I was excited about that, but, like, as far as, like, taking oils out of my hair and just giving my hair a zhuzh and making it look revived, it didn't really do anything. So I didn't really enjoy it. And I believe this guy was $28. I purchased the full size and I think they had a mini on the Sephora website. I'm not sure if they still do or not, but I was like, why would I have not have just purchased a mini? When I'm trying things out, I should just know, like, sort of like hair care products or skincare products, if I want to try something out, if they have a mini size, purchase the mini, like try it out first, save a little bit of money. That's going to be like one of my resolutions here for 2018. Like stop buying full size things when you're not for sure if you're going to enjoy them or not. Cause that's a bummer. I mean, it's still, it's probably like up to here. Um, and so that was kind of a $28 down the drain because I have not touched this since I decided it was a no go for me after I gave it enough tries. I was like, yeah, no, I'm over it. I have another lip product in here. This is from Makeup Forever. This is one of their Artist Liquid Matte Lipsticks, and mine is in the shade 103. So I bought this because I started to hear people like using it quite a bit, using it in like tutorials and get ready with me's. And this was a while ago. I've been planning this video for quite some time. I just always kind of have a running list and this was one of the first things on there. So I purchased this quite some time ago and I do like the color. It's a nice like nude pink I would say. I like the color but the formula does nothing for me and it was $20 and $20 that's more in my like expensive end for liquid lipsticks so to pay $20 for a formula that I just don't think is very good at all. Um, It definitely like I apply it 
and I could sit down and film a video for 30 minutes and when I get done it's already like cracked on like the inner parts of my lips and stuff it just doesn't last very long on me and I find it to be really really drying so I like the color but I never reach for this lipstick because I don't like the formula at all and I just don't think it holds up so $20 on a liquid lipstick I didn't enjoy is like ooh, ooh, that hurts so next up I have two more products that I returned, no, three more products that I returned. The last three are all products that I returned. The next two are from Tarte Cosmetics. So I purchased their Park Avenue Princess Contour Palette and then I also purchased the Clay Play 2 Palette. I purchased the Contour Palette first. I was really excited about it. I love face palettes contour palettes, bronzer palettes. I'm really into face palettes. So when I saw it come out, I thought the packaging looked beautiful. There was two like setting powders in there. There was contour shades, bronzer shades, and I was just excited for it. So I purchased it and I got it home and I was playing with it and I was like, okay, like I like it, but it's super similar to the original Clay Play palette which apparently is no longer available. But I was like, ooh, I think maybe it's too similar to the Clay Play. Like, does it make sense that I have both of these? And when I actually went through and was like comparing it to the Clay Play, A, it was just super similar, but also I found the shades in the Clay Play palette to be even better. So I was like, I just don't feel like it makes a lot of sense for me to hold on to this when I have something super similar, but also better at the same time. So I ended up returning it. I did like there, that there was setting shades in there. I typically like to use a setting powder versus like a baking powder, like loose powder to set my under eyes with. I like that those were in the palette and you don't get that with the clay play, but like I have palettes that I have the option for. So I decided to return it at the $46. Then I went on and I purchased the Clay Play 2 palette. I was so excited for the Clay Play 2 because I love the original Clay Play. It had eyeshadows, had contours, bronzers, and then the Clay Play 2 was coming out with eyeshadows, and then also had a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be like my perfect palette. That's truly what I thought of the Clay Play 2. And I went out immediately, I purchased the Clay Play 2 at the $46, and I got home, and I mean, I have a video, I'll leave it linked down below, and I, I talk about the Clay play too for a while but I was so upset with that palette and that was kind of the first like inkling towards Tarte that I was like what is going on with this brand because basically that it seemed like they had just used the original clay play palette and put a few different shades in there like the shade names in the clay play 2 were the exact same as the clay play 1 that might not be a huge deal and I totally understand that because a lot of times I don't even look at shade names it's not something I pay attention to but it was kind of weird because in the clay play 2 there's a shade called onyx which is typically a black and in the palette I don't remember what it was but like a sparkly bronze shimmer and I'm like what like the shades made sense like the shade names in the clay play made sense to what the shades were. The shades in the Clay Play 2 were just a repeat of the Clay Play. They did make sense to the shades, but also like seven of the shades in the Clay Play 2 were the same as the original Clay Play. They only switched out a few different shades. The bronzer was the same, and then they gave you a blush and highlight. I'm like, I basically just bought the exact same palette with a few switcheroos in there. What the heck did you just do, Samantha? And so I returned it at $46, and I was mad about it. I liked the blush in there, but the highlight was like straight glitter, and it looked horrible on me. But I was like, I, I just I just bought the freaking same palette. Like, what the heck? And other people were making videos about it and, and, and trying to figure it out, and there was, you know, people were asking about it on Tarte, and all Tarte really said was, oh, people said they really liked the clay play, but they wanted more face shades, so we redid it for you, ta-da! And I'm like, no, you didn't! You tried to play us! Like, there was something fishy about clay play too from the very beginning. And then obviously what happened with the Shape Tape Foundation, all of that stuff went down, but then, but then, People are now telling me that the Park Ave Princess palette, which was an all matte palette, people are now saying that they're buying it and there's two shimmer shades in it. And I'm like, what? Someone messaged me on Snapchat the other day. They said, did your Park Ave Princess have shimmer shades in it? And I said, no. And they said, mine has two shimmers. And so I started looking into it and now people are saying there's shimmers in there. And I'm like, what is happening? What are you doing, Tarte? What is going on? I'm getting very confused. And I've come on to my YouTube channel and I have said, I'm not supporting Tarte right now, and I know a lot of people, there, there's there's so much stuff that happened with the Shape Tape Foundation, and there's fingers being pointed at everybody, and 
all this kind of craziness. But I know people are saying like it's unfair that I'm just boycotting Tarte because of the Shape Tape Foundation and that is not true. I am not purchasing from Tarte or supporting Tarte right now because I feel like they're doing some really weird things between the Park Ave Princess Contour Palette, the Clay Play 2 Palette, the Shape Tape Foundation, which maybe is the same as one of Tarte's old foundations. There's too much weird stuff going on right now and I'm feeling very confused and very conflicted about the brand and that's why I've decided to stop supporting them and stop making purchases from them. And it's just crazy. Like when someone sent me that snap about the shimmer shades, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? What is going on here? So I would love to know if you guys got the Park Ave Princess contour palette. Is yours all matte? Does yours have shimmers in it? I'm completely confused. Uh, so those are two items. I returned both of them to Tarte. They were both $46. I returned them both. And that was a, another big reason. And just when Shape Tape Foundation came along and everything with that happened and that horrible Pop Sugar article, I was like, you know what? You've been feeling on the fence for a while. You've been feeling like something funny is going on here. You just need to just put it on pause for right now. I really regret it buying both of those products and I was really glad. Um, I think I purchased either one or both from Alta, I can't remember. And luckily I, I was able to return it because, I mean, 46 times two, <clears throat> like, girlfriend wanted her money back. So those were a regret. Whew, okay, whew. Anyways, moving on. One last, one last product here. But this one I also did return and this was the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. It was one of their new foundations. I think it was only like $12. I ended up returning it because I was going to Ulta to return the Clay Play 2 palette. And I had just bought that Maybelline foundation as well. And I was like, you know, if I had to drive all the way to Ulta just to return a $12 foundation, I don't know if I would have, which why not? I don't know because it just would have sat in my collection until I threw it away. But um, I was like, well, since I'm already going to return a $46 product, I might as well take this one back as well. I don't regret buying it because it was a horrible foundation or because it was so expensive or things like that. Uh, I just bought it kind of on a whim. I love buying foundations and when I saw Maybelline was coming out with a new one, I was like, ooh, yes. I think if I would have waited just a little tiny bit and started watching some of the reviews that were coming in, I would have realized that it wasn't for me. It is actually a full coverage foundation, but I didn't mind it. I didn't mind the finish that it gave to my skin, um, but it oxidized really bad on me and turned me very, very orange. And a lot of people have said that about that foundation. So I think if I would have waited a little bit and seen the reviews come in, I would have been like, ooh probably not going to be the best foundation for me. Um, but unfortunately, just the color matching and turning me orange and way, way dark. Like, it took a while though. Like I can remember doing my makeup at like nine o'clock in the morning and then going, getting ready to film at like one and being like, whoa, what happened to my face? So unfortunately, that one did not work out for me, but that was also another product that I returned. So I thought I would mention that in the products that I regret buying video. But after that, that's going to do it for today's video. All right, guys, so that is everything for my latest products that I regret buying video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful or entertaining in some way. Again, I will have my regret series playlist listed down below. I'd love to know, have you bought anything recently that you're like, ooh, shucks, shouldn't have done that for any variety of reason. I mean, the products in here, some were because of price, some because they just simply didn't work out for me and some because I just thought some shady was going on and it made me upset but I would love to know any of your recent regrets as well if you would like to share them with us but as always if you guys did enjoy this video I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that you'll also consider subscribing before you go and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video